Well, hi everyone, this is Bob the Science Guy, and today we're going to talk about a very common problem in physics, and that is how to calculate vectors. Now, this is related to solving triangles, and we'll learn how to do it on a slide rule. So, let's go ahead and get started. Now, let's look at a classic physics problem. Say, you're going to shoot an arrow from a hunting bow from this position, and you're going to shoot it upward and have it arch down. You know that this angle is 30 degrees. You know the initial velocity is going to be 60 meters per second. Now you're going to be asked to calculate certain things on physics tests. First of all, uh, how high will it go? How far will it go? What is the time of flight from here to here? What is the velocity that it hits the ground, and at what angle? Now this isn't going to be a physics lesson. I'm not going to go over the calculations on how to determine all of these things. However, most physics problems that you work with are going to involve you doing a straightforward calculation, or you're going to have to calculate something and then use the results of that calculation to directly solve your problem. This is an example of the latter. You have to understand the forces on the arrow in order to solve the equation. And those forces involve vectors. And I'm going to show you how to find those vectors using a slide rule. So the first step in solving this problem is writing down what you know. So we know, for example, that this angle is 30 degrees, and we know that this velocity is 60 meters per second. Now, in order to solve the problem, we have to break this vector down into two components. We have a component in the x-axis and we have a component in the y-axis. Now what are the values or the magnitudes of these two components? Well the magnitude of this component is 60 meters per second times the sine of 30 degrees. And the magnitude of this component is 60 meters per second times the cosine of 30 degrees. Now just to tell you quickly how these are used, the time is related to how long that arrow goes up and then comes back down. The distance is related to the velocity in the x component times the time. Now to do this quickly on the calculator, what we'll do is we'll take 60 times 30 cosine, and that will equal 51.962 meters per second. And then we do the same thing, so that 60 times 30 sine equals 30. Now to solve this on a slide rule, it's just as easy and sometimes much quicker. To do that, we'll go to our virtual Picket N3 and go ahead and have at it, which actually is the same one that I use. So once again, here's our virtual Picket N3. Here's the slide. Here is the cursor. Now if you look on the left side of the slide rule, you'll see a series of scales. Uh, you'll see a D scale on the stator or the body of the slide rule down on the bottom, just above it you will see a C scale, and then you're going to see the trigonometry scales. You're going to see a T scale, another T scale, an S scale, and an ST scale. These are the scales that we're going to be using today. So to quickly find the different components of your vectors, all we have to do is come out here to our velocity, which is 6. Now, if we put the 1 of the index of the C directly over the 6, we can actually look up on the, on the S scale and come down here to 30, and we will directly read off the value of sine 30 of 60. And as you can see down here, right next, just to the left of pi, is 3. Now you may have noticed that I started off with the cosine, or the x component of the velocity, when I used my calculator. I could have just as easily started off with a sine. 
On the slide rule, we're using something called the law of sines, and let me explain how that works. Now, the law of sines says that if you take the value of the side of a triangle, in this case 60 meters per second for the hypotenuse, and put it over the sine of the opposite angle, which is 90 degrees, that will equal the value of the length of the side opposite 30 degrees and the value of the length of the side opposite 60 degrees. Now, why are we using 90, 30, and 60? Well, if we look at our triangle, this was 30 degrees. We know that that is 90 degrees. That means that this is 60 degrees. Now, the sine of 30 degrees is the relationship between the hypotenuse and the opposite side of the triangle. The sine of 60 degrees is again the relationship between the opposite side of the triangle and the hypotenuse. Now, this is the same as the cosine of 30 degrees. Cosine of an angle equals the sine of 90 minus the angle. In other words, it's complementary angle. And the complementary angle to 30 degrees is 60 degrees, because 90 minus 30 is 60. Now, in the middle of the slide, next to the 30 in black, you will see a 60 in red, just to the left of it. That means that the sine of 30 degrees is also the cosine of 60 degrees. 60 is the complementary angle to 30 degrees. Now, to measure this directly, all we would have to do is we would have to move our cursor over to the cosine of 30 degrees. See how the, co see how the 30 is in red? And you'll notice that that is also the sine of 60 degrees. And if you look down, what do we have? We have 5, 1, 5, 2, 52. Just remember that when dealing with slide rules, you always have to keep track of your own decimal place. So 5.2 could be 52, it could be 5.2, it could be 5,200. You have to know which one it is. Okay, well, there's a couple of other problems that they may ask you as well. For example, they may just give you Vx and Vy and say, okay, well, what is the total velocity and what is angle theta? Now, obviously, we already know this because we just figured it out. But let's just kind of play along here for a second. We know the tangent of angle theta would be 30 over 52. That means that the arc tangent of 30 over 52, which is the inverse of the tangent, spits out the angle. So let's go ahead and calculate that on the slide rule. Okay, so let's go ahead and review real quickly how to divide on a slide rule. Now, what we're doing is we're dividing 30 which means that we're going to put the cursor directly over the 3 on the d scale. That gives us the log of 30. And then we're going to divide it or subtract the log of 52 from it. And here's our answer underneath the right index of the c scale. That was pretty easy. But now, how do we find the tangent? Well, you see the two t's up here just to the left of the word picket. All right. Let's go ahead and bring this over a little bit. Now, leaving the cursor where it is, let's close the scale or balance the scale, which means that we line the indexes back up with each other. Looking on that upper T scale, if we follow it over to where the hairline is, look at that. We're at 30. That angle theta is 30 degrees. So once again, rather than just put in 30 degrees and hit tangent on our calculators, we actually found the value of tangent directly and then figured out what angle it belonged to, in this case, 30 degrees. Now, what if we had a situation like this? We either need both legs of the triangle or we need one leg plus the angle, and we can figure out the other leg. But what if we're asked to figure out, well, what is the velocity, which is the hypotenuse of this triangle? Well, how do we do that? Well, we recall from Pythagorean, if we call that C, and we call that A, and we call that B, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So, if we want to figure out C, what we do is we take the square root of A squared 
plus b squared. Now in this case, a is 30 plus 52 squared. Now if we add those together and then take the square root of that, we'll get v. Let's go see how to do that. Now if you look at the scales on the left here, if you look towards the upper end of the scales, you will see the a and the b scale right here. Now, a couple of interesting things that you will notice about those. Let's come out here to 2 on the C and the D scale down below. What is up on the A and B scale? 4. Uh, how about if we come out to 4? What's up on the A and the B scale? Well, 16. So, because here's, here's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So in other words, the A and the B scale are the squares of the are the squares of the numbers that are on the C and the D scales. Now this also works out pretty well because what we can do is we can take a number like say 25 on the A and the B scale and we can read straight down and get the square root. And this is the way that you would normally find square roots on a slide rule. Again, I have a full tutorial on how to use all the scales on the slide rule. This is just basically a rough review. Now getting back to our problem, the first thing that we had to do is we had to square 30. So we'll put the cursor over the 3 on the C and the D scale and we'll read straight up and see that the square of that is 9. So 30 is 3 times 10 to the 1. If you multiply 3 times 10 to the 1 times 3 times 10 to the 1, you get 9 times 10 to the 2. So this is 900. Likewise, if we come out here to 52 on the C and the D scale, we can read straight up and find the answer to that is 2700. So now this equation becomes V equals the square root of 900 plus 2700. Now just a little bit of quick mental arithmetic, and if we take the square root of 3600, Whoops. And if we take the square root of 3600, that equals 60. And as you recall, our vector here was 60 meters per second. Now obviously, when you get awesome with a slide rule, you can probably do these vector equations quicker on a slide rule than you can with a calculator because you've got to just do everything individually, whereas a slide rule, once you set it up once, you're basically just moving the cursor around and getting your answers. So believe it or not, unless I need eight digits of precision, the slide rule is actually a better option for me on a lot of my tests. I can get it done quicker than I can with my calculator. So this is Bob the Science Guy, learning how to become awesome with a slide rule, one practical problem at a time. So follow me along and we'll have some more fun with slide rules in the future. Take care, guys.